Okay, fellas, we told you it's call-in show season. Um, this is where we let you do all the work for us and um, promote your trades that we think sound smart. So um, calling in today is Ben Freeman. Uh, ben, you're a seasoned DJ down in Houston, Texas. Um, you're pretty active behind the scenes in political prediction. I think you even built a YouTube channel with a pretty sizable following. Um, maybe like very briefly, you can say hello to the boys and introduce yourself and um, you know whatever you want to say about yourself, say it. Whatever you don't, just you know, keep it between you and Jesus. Uh, welcome to the show, Ben. Thank you. Th- thank you, King Dog. Yeah. Um, so I kind of get got in, into this world in 20, 2020 when we were on co- quarantine. And yeah, I, I just, you know, I, I like to follow politics in my free, free time. So I, I thought I might do a YouTube channel. And, and, I, and, I, and I haven't really been that active since the presidential e election but n- n- now just on, on my own and through the ssg um yeah I'm, I'm trying to get back in it uh well welcome to the show uh we love having you on our show and not competing with us somewhere else because you're a smart guy and um you've provided like a steady pipeline of keen insights so um you pitched to me you wanted to sort of um maybe start in a wonky place like I think the 2022 election will be like um, this insert election and then maybe back into what that means for you and how you're going to bet. Um, do you want to go there? So what are you um, like? I think a lot of people maybe make the mistake of saying, oh, this election will be just like the last one. So I guess I'll start and say, is this election going to be just like the last one? And if it's not going to be, pray tell. Yeah, well, I would say that we we can actually gain pretty good insights from the past uh, eight eight years in the past four cycles. So, right now, kind of on my s- spreadsheets and um, w- w- looking at the polling and then the actual margins from the twenty fourteen midterms from the twenty twenty uh, from the twenty eighteen midterms, but but then also um, the House and Senate races and. 2016 and, and 2020 as as well so um i think looking at 2014 so that this was the last time that we had a democratic president um and so in this year we saw that the polls were at um the real core politics final polling average was about 2.4 and and there ended up being a, a polling error of about three points in the Republicans direction. So, so not, not a, a full red wave, but I would say if, if we are going to look at one year, that's, that's pretty similar. I would say that 2014 um, is probably the, the closest thing that we can get. Cause I, I mean, Trump w- wasn't even in, in, in the picture in, in 2014. He kind of is in the picture in 2022. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I would say looking eight years in the background is the best place to start out with. It so kind of so to contextualize this, I think, I don't know if, I think I'm quoting 538 when I say this, but I want to say 2018, that big democratic year midterm was like a D plus eight cycle. So you're saying, you know, I think the way the numbers look to me, that this will be a favorable cycle to the Republicans, maybe not like astonishing tidal wave, 50 house seats or whatever 2018 was, but that this should be a good year for Republicans. Yeah, 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 and and I I actually think that five five thirty eight is going to be pretty accurate in twenty twenty two, um in twenty eighteen they were almost spot on so the GOP or the the Dems gained about forty seats in the House and I think like the five thirty eight estimate was pretty spot on there, um and so right now I think on the Congressional ballot five five thirty eight has about I think it's three, uh, R plus three three point one um, when you kind of like sc- screen in all the all the factors I I think uh, give or take that that sounds about right for the for the House on the uh, on the Senate like on the state level races I do think it's going to be different because you get um, different factors um, that yeah so so let me. Um... On behalf of the boys, let me ask an obvious question, which is, uh, why are we, why do you know something that like we don't, you know, like you're, 
I, I know you built a pretty good track record doing this on your own on YouTube, which is how we met. Like, honestly, you introduced yourself and I was like, oh, who is this random dude? And then I was like, oh, this guy's like, this guy's got game. But like, like what, um, like saw yourself, you know, like don't apologize, you know, like, can you, what, what, what do you, like, do you do this on your own time or do you just look at 538 and squint and say, uh, you know, it looks right. <laughs> No, well, so in the in the 2020 cycle, I I mean, we we were hearing all these all these types of different things. I mean, I'm just so many different news news stories. People are doing different things. Uh, I mean, people people saying that all, all the all the polls are fake. I mean, pe- people kind of doing their, their own thing. So in for for the 2020 presidential e- election, I was one electoral vote off. I I switched north uh, north 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 Carolina and Georgia, but I mean, like. So 49. So, so on your, which is public record somewhere on YouTube in the recesses, you called 49 out of 50 states correctly, which I think blitz the tweet. God, the meth King is the only one to nail all 50 um, for. So 49 out of 50 in 2020, go check. What's your YouTube page called? It's called Ben's election pre- predictions. And, and so it, it was, it was actually 48 states. Cause I, I, I flipped Georgia in oh, North, yeah, yeah. North, North Carolina, but, but, but they actually ended up canceling each other out. Yeah. So I, I was I was only one. I thought you were gonna say like you don't count North Dakota as its own state, so you could only you know mess up one or something. <laughs> well, yeah, um, yeah, but so I would I would say that I mean you 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 really can't focus on on one thing. Like I think you have to look at the poll some. One thing I would say though is looking at the past uh, re uh, the past. Re, re results is 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 key so like looking at at at, at 2020 i mean I, I was laser focused at what happened in 2016 too because i i mean like there there were polls that were showing like biden up in like iowa and and, and stuff and, yep. and and clearly that that that, that wasn't going to be the case um or or biden up in florida when in 2018 you saw that the the GOP won both of their state ride, ride, wide races there. Yeah, well, I think a lot of the game is kind of identifying what's noise and what's not. Like, you know, um, Iowa polls now, Des Moines Register say, oh my gosh, this could be a real race. It's very popular for, you know, righties to be betting on a Republican win in New York right now. Like these things sound kind of crazy, but um, it sounds like they do contain useful information about how polls are going to miss. and. Um, you know, what the kind of bigger conditions are. Um, well, do you want to back that up? I mean, everyone is, um, I, I, you know, we're trying as hard as possible just not to be the Arizona, Georgia and Pennsylvania podcast, uh, which is what every political podcast is right now. Um, but uh, do you want to uh, make some projections based on what you just said, or maybe call some bold trades? Trades? Yeah, yeah. So I would say starting out in Pennsylvania, and and one one trend that I I think will be very in, important in Arizona, Pennsylvania, and Georgia is how much split ticket voting there is. Because if we if we look at these these races, how how they're priced on predicted. So in in Arizona, we have Lake price at seventy five cents, which I personally think is high. And we have Blake Masters at at thirty nine cents. So I, I mean that is that is like a that's crazy. Yeah, that is a huge di- difference here. And and we ha- have to think like like why what, why is is there this b- big gap? And, and how many people do we actually think are going to split ticket vote? I, I I mean the uh, the mainstream media w- loves loves to cover these split ticket voters, but. In the in the r- r- real world, like in our in our hyper partisan um, space, like I I just I just don't think that there are going to be over five five percent split voting in Pennsylvania, in Georgia, and in Air- Arizona. So if we look at Pennsylvania, um, if we think that the uh, that Josh Shapiro is going to win by, you know, eight eight, eight to ten points. And in, in the last, um, tra- uh, how do you say, trial trial Fager or tra- tra- Trafalgar? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Trafalgar. Yeah. So in in his last poll, I mean, he he had the Democrat up eight or nine points. And and so I mean, t- typically they don't undercount the uh, 
GOP right. su- support there. So, I, I mean, I right now am, am taking Fetterman and, and and also in their last poll, I think they saw Fetterman up by two. So, I, I, I mean, I I still think that Fetterman holds the edge there. I I, I think he's anywhere in the range of a 60 to 65 percent favorite. And I, I, I think right now Oz is at like 52 percent. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, what do you make of, um, um, again, trying really hard not to be in Arizona, Pennsylvania and Georgia podcast. Um, <laughs> one of the stories that I hear over and over again from like the Republican version of wine moms, you know, whatever that is, is um, some version of, well, I'm like really a Republican, but I can't vote for Herschel Walker. So I'm going to vote for Brian Kemp. And um, but like Herschel, I'm going to vote for, you know, Warnock or something like that, where like kind of like how every Democrat gave money to Kamala Harris because they were like butthurt and woke, but like none of them voted for her. You know, they all voted for (laughs) Joe Biden. So like I sense that there's something like that going on in split ticket voting where like, you know, Republican, these people are going to be faithful to they they have some sort of incentive structure so they can tell themselves that they're good people. Like, well, I voted for Kemp. So, I'm you know, I voted for myself, but I can't vote for, um, Herschel Walker because I got to be a good person or something it, like is this bullshit to you like so i mean i think there are there are some you know highly educated um like very prominent on social media and yeah. twitter these like very kind of wealthy people that like like to say this stuff yeah um but i i, I actually think that the georgia senate race is at about a 50 50 i like I mean, being 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 from the South, where there where there is a lot of kind of even evangelical uh, Christians, I I actually think that Hersh- 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 Walker kind of being open and being like, yes, I I I I have I've sinned, sinned. Yeah. but I am s- saved by God, and and, and, and and I mean, he, he is leaning hard into that, and, 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 and so he's. He's almost trying to like kind of be more godly than Warnock. He was actually a pastor. So I I I actually think so. Okay, one thing in the Georgia Senate race, I think that like some places ha- ha- like have the uh, say that this isn't going to go into a runoff. I mean, I I am almost near certain that, that this is going to go into a runoff. So, so in in the second. Georgia debate. Hers- Herschel Walker wasn't even on the stage. It was Warnock, and then this this third third party Whipper. Uh, yeah, the fake candidate. Right, we're right. So I think there are going to be some Kent voters who vote for him, and I I think Warnock might get might get forty eight. I think Herschel Walker might get forty eight, and so I I definitely think this is going to going to get going to go into a runoff. And if on um e election day if if either candidate gets gets over 80 percent to win um and 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 this is and this is what happened in 2020 i think david per per purdue got 95 percent you definitely want to buy the uh the lower candidate on there because i mean i'm i'm fairly certain that neither candidate is going to get above 50 percent because i mean i i i just don't think there's going to be that much split ticket voting and i think brian kemp is going to win this in a landslide like yeah yeah i think that's a that's a short-term bond to bet against stacy abrams um well okay then maybe we'll just leave it on this then so um over at poly market it's a 25 cent yes so 25 percent probability um that we see a runoff election in georgia you are not the first smart guy i've heard say that you think this race will go to an election um Knowing that you're sitting in Houston, Texas, and not overseas, um, just answer intellectually. Would you? So, so you would take that? You would take it at 25 cents and and hold on that we're going to see a runoff in Georgia. Yeah. So, I mean, in in 2020, both of the Senate races went into a runoff, and I mean, I I, th- I think now you have a more high profile third party uh, candidate on the who was on the uh, Senate stage, and I mean, since I think. Herschel Walker is flawed, and, and you and you are going to have this people who are like, listen, I'm 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 voting for Kent, but I I can't stomach voting for Walker. I I don't think those people are necessarily going to vote for Warnock. Some will, but yeah, I would definitely buy this at, at, at 25. I I think that that's going to go well over 50 before the um 
Yeah. yeah. And it could be pretty swingy in election night too. So, um, all right, well, the, the more, you know, stay woke, right. Um, well, uh, Ben, hopefully not the last time we'll see you on the podcast. Um, it's been fun getting to know you and, um, reading some of your analysis and projections. So we're very glad to get to share them with the world. Um, hopefully we can continue to do that. Um, thanks for joining the show. Or I guess I should ask, where can people, find, are you on Twitter or anything or where can people find yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very kind of low, low key on Twitter. I, I don't really tweet, but I follow everyone in the, or I follow all the D D gens. My, uh, handle is Ben, Ben, Ben W Freeman. And I mean, if you want to go visit my YouTube channel, it's it's pretty dead. But if you want to message oh me or yeah. something, it's uh, Ben's election pre- predictions. So. Sounds like a hot dog stand. Um, <laughs> all right, man. Well, better low key than um, low T. So uh, thanks for joining. And uh, we'll see you again. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Right. Bye. See you, man.